Anyway, um, hello and welcome to issue, issue, episode <laughs> number four of uh, How Marvelous. I am Max. I am Mickey. I am JR. How's it going? It goes. I'm good. Woo. Cool. <laughs> Trying to hide the fact that we record a bunch of these all back to back. <laughs> well, now you've given up the game. I haven't seen you since I blinked. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, anyway, this this week we're doing number four of What If, uh, volume yeah, one. Yeah, What If, uh, volume one, number four. What if the invaders had stayed together after World War Two? And the answer is a whole bunch of bullshit. Uh, um, you got a creative team here? Yeah, I forgot to do that last episode. Uh, this was written by Roy Thomas, penciled by Frank Robbins, inked by Frank Springer, colored by George Bell, and lettered by Joe Rosen and John Costanza. Uh, this, this issue is interesting simply because it actually takes place in the primary Marvel Universe, what used to be called Earth-616 and is now just Earth. Uh, but yeah, they are, they are trying to uh, fill in some plot holes here. Um, and so... Oy, okay, so... What we've got here is that, you know, the the issue begins and Captain America and Bucky disappear in the uh, toward the end of World War Two. Um, we get a recap of how Cap went in the water and Bucky died, died. Right. Air quotes. Yeah. It's like everybody knows now. Right. Um uh, which, which I must say, like uh, I think we're on issue four of uh, uh, What If, and this is already the second retelling of that. And the very next issue, uh, not to spoil for uh, the audience, uh, is another goddamn retelling of it. Yep. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things at this point. You know, it's kind of like if they if they do. I never again need to see Batman's parents die. I never again need to see Krypton explode. And I never again need to see Bucky and Cap go into the water. Like, none of that. N we, we know. We know. <laughs> we know it happened. We know how it happened. I can basically recite every moment of it from top to bottom. Um, that said... If you don't kill Ben Parker on page, I am throwing this in the garbage. <laughs> That's one I forgot to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, thank, thank God Homecoming didn't feel the need to do that. Um, yes. Like, whatever. Thank anyway, God for a lot so, of things related to Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh... But anyway, so yeah, we get the we get the standard whatever and like Toro <laughs> I love this because we actually get to the human torch, the android one, and his sidekick Toro are making their way to Berlin uh when when we we actually see Hitler in the bunker. <laughs> in the bunker, having just shot Ava Brown. Yeah. And he's Ava got Brown a lackey is already with him. dead. What? Yeah. He's got a lackey with him who's like, tell them all that something, I don't know, he's being fucking Hitler. And when, I, when I'm dead, burn our bodies. Yeah. Um, and the guy's like, yeah, sure. I got gotcha. you. And, uh, and like... That's when that's when the human torch and Toro burn in or burst in, and the uh, 
and Hitler's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, he goes to reach for a detonator. Um, and so the human torch is like, oh, shit, and burns him alive. <laughs> so, you know, it, I guess in, in normal Marvel continuity, <laughs> Hitler... <laughs> Hitler, Hitler was alive when he burned, and uh, not not the worst, not the worst problem. I mean, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's, and I I love he's like, uh, he's as he's burning, he tells this lackey to. <laughs> Tell them I committed suicide. And the guy's like, Yavol, and all this. And I I love that, like, all of his, uh, all of his instructions to this guy are about maintaining the, the, like, uh, the legacy of the Third Reich. Yeah. Whereas... You know, I'm u- I'm used to today's uh, crazy dictators, the the Kim Jong Il's and the Kim Jong Uns, who would be sitting there like burning alive and be like, "To tell the world I beat Michael Jordan in one on one, and that I died a virgin because no woman could handle my massive dick." Like, no. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm just... fairly certain if this was Trump, his last words would be like, Hillary's emails. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, yeah, or even just tell the world that I am not dead. Like, yeah. yeah. This, is, this, kind of, this kind of crazy dictator seems almost quaint now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, so um, then we switch to... Yeah. Well, I just mean like in that one regard, not so much everything else. Uh, God, I keep I keep walking into stuff like this. Like I I keep like going to make a joke and then suddenly it's just like, "Oh shit, JR is a fascist." Uh, but uh, But no, the uh so we switch to to Namor, who is in the Pacific, and uh, dealing with dealing with things on that end since Berlin's wrapped up. Um, and we only we literally get like two three panels of Namor before we switch to London, and we have Spitfire and Union Jack. Um, who stop an assassination attempt upon uh, Churchill? Well, it, it's either Churchill or the captain from Tintin. I'm willing well, to go with both. <laughs> I many people don't know this, but Churchill was actually huge on cosplay. Um, yeah, I mean, like right now, it's the captain from Tintin. Had they caught him a day earlier, it, it actually would have been Naruto. But uh, oh no, I was gonna go uh, the main care main character from Kill La Kill. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they they stopped this random German, and they were just like, "Hey, didn't you hear? Uh, you all have lost." And to be fair, he might not have, but. Uh, we, they go to a secret meeting in Big Ben because that's like literally where everything in England happens. Uh, did we skip a bit where the inciting incident for all of this was that Cap and Bucky die instead of, or no, they, no, Cap dies too with Bucky. That's the inciting incident for this issue. Well, no, because this is main Marvel continuity. So Cap is presumed dead. Oh, okay. But in fact, he's just frozen in the water. But like I said, we're in Big Ben, and frankly, I'm honestly surprised 
there is not a beef eater at the table. Right. Um, by how stereotypical this is. <laughs> but uh, Spitfire and Union Jack go to their meeting at Big Ben, and they're all just like, hey, where's Cap? And they're like, oh yeah, Cap's dead, by the way. <laughs> and everybody loses their shit. Um, Toro has a nice little freak out, um, but doesn't feel inclined to put a shirt on. Well, that's a, that's one thing I really like about Toro is that nobody nobody really talks about the fact that the original Human Torch ran around with a mostly naked teenage boy. Um, I mean, I know. Look, I know that. Uh, the stereotype is that uh, every sidekick relationship involves a certain amount of buggery. But, like, this is a bit on the nose, guys. Like, as much like as people Bruce, Bruce talk about... Bruce is a leg man, and uh, the torch is clearly a chest man. Well, sure. you know, I... Like, everybody goes on about Bruce and Dick, but, um, but honestly, like, I feel like if you're looking at Toro, maybe Wortham wasn't wholly off the mark. <laughs> um, but anyway, so everybody's shocked and appalled that, uh, that he is ostensibly dead, and, uh, Spitfire and Union Jack, like, I don't really know why they're here because they do not appear in the rest of the issue, but for like maybe another panel uh, toward the end. It's at this point that they fuck off to whatever they've got going on. Well, it's the rest of them. All the other invaders are like, well, we're Americans, bye. And they go back to DC and Spitfire well, and right. Union Jack are like, oh, we're going to stay here because this is like where we live. I like, just mean in the grand scheme of things, not necessarily sure. like, yeah, they fuck off out of the story. Yes. Uh, so the invaders head back to the United States and land on the White House lawn. And then they're surprised when like the Secret Service is just like, who the fuck are you? And uh, or, or look so at they... Namor and the torch and go like, didn't you guys wreck New York? <laughs> yeah. Um. But, uh, so they, they meet up with Truman and they're, Truman's just basically like, yeah, so we got to have a Captain America and America and Bucky. And so they, uh, that's when our new Cap and Bucky come in and it turns out that this Cap is formerly the spirit of 76, um, and Bucky is a bat boy for the Yankees. Um, Fred Davis, who yeah. pinched for Bucky once, even when he was just a bat boy for the New York Yankees. And it's like, so? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> also, you're blonde. We could even take care of that. I know it's 45, yeah. but, like, come on. Dying yeah, hair was a thing there. there. Yeah, especially we, since you're blonde. Like, we don't even have to work that hard. Yeah. Yeah, like, if we were going from, like, brunette to blonde, a little effort may be involved. But with with this, it's just literally, like, who gives a shit? Just rub some but, dirt um, in it. You'll be okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, wind, we wind up with, uh, with the... Um, the wizard and Miss America joining them. And it's at this point that they're, they're just like, yeah, let's wrap shit up in, uh, in the Pacific and everything. And that's fine. Whatever. But then they do. And then they just decide to stay together as the all winners squad. So actually I had a question about this. So I thought the all winners squad was also a thing in 616. Is it only it, in this issue? 
No. So, yeah, this is this is like trying to explain why how the how it is that the invaders became the all winner squad and explain like the Captain America from the 50s and all of this other bullshit because oh, it's right that's where I'm coming up with that is because it's the cap from the 50s who talks about the all winner squad right yeah okay gotcha so so yeah we we're treated to a little a little highlight reel of the all winners squad uh and their various adventures if you can call them that um at which point in 1946 they're just like uh we all have our own individual shit we've got going on and so they kind of split up for a little bit and we follow the human torch who goes to visit professor phineas horton and when they arrive there Horton is acting strangely and it turns out he's actually a shitty android uh, and we're introduced to Adam 2 which is Horton's second attempt at creating an artificial human and this one hates all humans um, so he proceeds to kidnap, he takes down Human Torch and Toro, shoves them in a, <laughs> shoves them in a container with uh, <laughs> Phineas Horton, and uh, they are found by the Patriot, who shows up out of nowhere. I mean, like... I'm, like, literally, it's just, there he is, because we needed someone. Ah! Yeah, like... Um, He's responding to... Oh, the, the, the human fire. torch set off the fire alarm. Right. Yeah. But, like, and, still, it's real goddamn lucky that he was close by. Yeah, 90, 90 seconds. He is 90 seconds of running and jumping away from this secret laboratory... Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, this... That's that's honestly the problem with this issue, is that everything... It is so dense that everything is basically... Uh, you know, it's, it's contrivance after contrivance, simply by virtue of the fact that we can't... We cannot pause to actually introduce people into the narrative we've just got to be like and then the patriots there it's fine whatever um we don't have the page space for this we're already asking for 30 or 14 extra pages than we normally get there's no way yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, um so the all winners squad shows up um and uh, the Human Torch fills them in on what Adam 2 is planning, which is to replace a politician with an android. But they don't know which one. Uh, spoiler alert, it's, it's Kennedy. It's, yeah. <laughs> So right really, Oswald was a hero, is what you're saying. Do what? So really, uh, Oswald was a hero, is what you're saying. Well. <laughs> <laughs> if they would have... If this idiot would have succeeded... I've, I've, already, I've already had my oops fascist moment. I probably <laughs> should refrain from responding. Um, but yeah, so they they... They try to track down Adam to and figure out what he's got going on. Uh, in the course of things, uh, fake Cap and Bucky happen across K-1. 
Kennedy's limousine where they find the driver knocked out and an android taking his place. Um, at which point Kennedy walks up and they're like, wait a minute, it's a robot. How do they know it's a robot? Because it has no irises. And it's at this point that Adam 2 is just like, ah, oh, fuck, I knew I forgot something. And it's just like, man... <sighs> Do you have any idea how long I spent programming him to accurately go a or ra? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I. This is what frustrates me is that it's 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 like uh, Lost Ark in that the hero literally doesn't actually have to do anything, and the 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 whole situation could probably take care of itself. I mean, yeah, he forgets to put irises on a robot. That's kind of a big deal. People are going to notice and he's going to be found out immediately. So did anybody really have to get that worked up about it? But there's no irises in your, uh, in your eyes there, Kent, er, Mr. Congressman. And also, you seem to have a garishly dressed purple man following you about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. That's just like, Bobby. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bobby's um, never been purple, sir. We know this. He's, it's a skin uh, He's, uh, sick. Um, so, yeah. So, fake Cap and Bucky are immediately grabbed. Um, but seeing his seeing his teenage sidekick uh, felled. Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I I got to a panel here that I almost spaced on the uh, the first time. Uh, uh, yeah, Cap Cap uh, 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 Bucky gets captured. Cap runs off and he goes and finds the help of the railroad. To, uh, so he goes to the old North Church in Boston, and I'm getting Fallout 4 flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes off to do a couple of railroad quests. Yeah. Um. <sighs> but he he climbs he climbs the he climbs the the bell tower in order to signal the others, but he he does, but then is immediately like attacked and killed um you know just just in cl just in case you weren't uh immediately aware that this was a cheap knockoff and uh so adam adam too makes another play for kennedy uh but the rest of the all winners squad uh, intervene and are in the process of dealing with him when suddenly Capri appears and Adam 2's like, no, one of my androids killed you. It told me so. And uh, tries to take off, but immediately runs into a wall and dies in a fire. Like, um, literally, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, like he, he's, he's just like, no, I've lost. I need to run. So he jumps in a car and immediately uh, just slams into a wall. And so Kennedy's just like, hey, thanks. You know, what would we do without you? Uh, so he leaves um, and Bucky's like, Cap, oh, my God, you're safe. And... Uh, and Cap is just like, well, Bucky or whoever you are, like, he's wearing the costume. Like, there have been enough newsreels, you know he's ostensibly supposed to be Bucky. You know, this whoever you are doesn't really achieve anything other than filling space. But anyway, the upshot of all of this is it turns out that the Patriot found dead cap threw on his costume and took his place threw on um, an extra costume from yeah. somewhere 
Because Namor the, had was just the costumes laying around. Right. Yeah. 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 And, like, I, you know, that outcome makes sense in in the idea that, yeah, the Patriot probably should have become Captain America. Why did we have to fuck around to get to this point? Also, yeah. also, uh, uh, I'm, I'm highly entertained. Like, some of these are just um, wonderful situations. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, issue... Uh, I think two issues away from now is actually like a full-blown Venture Brothers uh, episode. Uh, yes. But it got stuck into my head halfway through this uh, of, of JFK being like, oh, I got saved by the whizzer. It was a pisser. <sighs> yeah. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <sighs> the, the, the frustrating thing is Patriot isn't even the 50s Captain America. Um, Because he... Because I thought he was, and I'm like, well, that doesn't end well for him. But then I'm like, no, wait. Because he retires in 1950 from being Captain America and is replaced by some other asshole who's then the one that goes crazy and winds up uh, dying fighting... Steve and so it's just like all right whatever <laughs> um, he goes crazy and they freeze him don't they like they're just well, like they've, uh, they've they froze him in the 50s oh yeah and then he's released in the present day at the time it would have been the 70s but um but yeah I don't know this this whole issue is like what was this a plot hole people were clamoring to have filled? Like, well, I like I know comic geeks now are just like, but in this issue, he's wearing a hat. And then in this issue, he's not. Explain that one, comic people. But like, was anyone really clamoring to know I- what happened in between? I think that this is an internal uh, bullpen argument. Um, two writers were having a deep canonical argument about something. Uh, and it was just like, no, 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 it has to be like this. No, that doesn't explain this. Oh, well, what about this? And it's like, Jesus Christ, this is what came out of that. Yeah. I I do want to say I... <laughs> I love uh I love going to the wiki uh the the Marvel fandom wiki uh to to look up like who all of the various creators were and everything um because sometimes there will be some unintentional comedy in all of this and one of the things one of the things on the page for this issue is the fact that uh under characters uh, it has like all of the people who appeared, all of the supporting characters, the antagonists, and so on. And then it has other characters, and most of these are like, you know, Eva Braun, but it's just her corpse, <laughs> and like, you know, stuff like that. And then in among the characters that are mentioned is God, and then in parentheses, Yahweh. And this leads to an actual wiki page for God. But it's just like, yeah, God God was mentioned in passing. Not even like, hey guys, I met God, but like for the love of God. And they're just like, well, better put that on there. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Um, oh my God. <laughs> ah. Shit. So, overall, uh, personally, this was a slog. I mean, I was, I was, uh, when I was sitting here reading this, I was going, fuck, am I done yet? No, I'm only on page three. Okay, gotta keep going. And, yeah, because, as we've stated, it's a, it's a filling a plot hole that I feel like no one was really that concerned with. 
uh, and doing so in the most convoluted and wordy way possible. So, ew. Yeah, like um, uh, so, some of my absolute favorite uh, what if stories uh, from far beyond this uh, uh, era, of course, um, deal with the uh, uh, what ifs of Captain America. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this doesn't even scrape the bottom of their quality. Oh yeah, no. This 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 is one of those things that is like laying in the gutter wishing it could be like the shittiest what if Captain America had stubbed his toe in Avengers number 7 and you know, missed the coming of Kang the Conqueror or some shit. Um, yeah. Uh, my overall is, uh, <laughs> slog, <laughs> slog is very apt because I kept reading it and I was like, you're going to do something exciting, right? Nope. You're just going to kill a, a character I'd forgotten about and that's it. Okay. Why? You, you forgot about Hitler? <laughs> uh, 76. And I... but Th- also, Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Um, but also, like... What? So, in the previous episode, I was sort of... I guess, uh, not congrat- congratulatory, but like saying positive things about the way that they kind of captured this writer and artist captured the way that the the stories were told at the time that they're interjecting right Mm -hmm. in this instance it's like why are you doing that though (laughs) because we don't have to actually tell a 50s style or a late 40s style comic story when it's 1977 you could do something interesting now granted it would be three issues long but you know just why are you doing this why this and, and along that same line um why is your art style as absolutely terrible as no. it was as as like 40s comics could be where it's just like yeah it's a face I mean, like, it's got a mouth. In a, in a general sense, like... <laughs> what do you want? It's a funny it's a movie. Nice in a Picasso way. I don't know. My, my major thing is... Uh, it's kind of like when you're playing a retro-style video game, and it has a live system. And you're just kind of like, look, I realize what you're going for, but do we have to dredge up, like, all the worst shit about it, too? Like right, yeah, that's you a good know, point. there's a re- there's a reason this isn't the way we do things anymore. So yeah, it's just pure misery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just a whole lot of fucking me about for no good reason. Um, but yeah, so uh, join us yeah, next can time. Can we end this episode? I hate this uh, issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, join us next time when we will be uh, looking at what if Captain America hadn't vanished during World War II. Uh, In the meantime, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us at the email address I actually have this time, uh, howmarvelouspodcast at gmail.com. Bye. Bye. Bye.